Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. There are many things that can kill a MacBook, and we've gone over them on this channel, like moisture, air, the passage of time, simply using it. Something that I really didn't imagine would kill a MacBook in this way is dust. And I don't, when I say dust, I don't mean dust in terms of a lot of dust getting into a fan and clogging it up, and then somebody doesn't clean it, so the dust that got into their fan winds up causing it to overheat. No, no, no. I mean as in a single grain of dust actually getting into an area where a very, very thin cable wraps around a moving hinge and then just punctures it. So let's go over what I mean by that. So on older MacBook Pros, you had screen cables that look kind of like this. See this? Look at this. Look at this nice hardy cable with its nice jacket. Look at that jacket material over there. And on the newer MacBooks, you kind of have something that looks eh, a little bit more wimpy. You got something that looks like this. And this is totally fine cable if it's not really going to be exposed to the elements very much. But this cable is, and it's in an area where you're going to get a lot of dust. The reason you're going to get a lot of dust is because the fans are doing a lot of the exhaust and intake work into this very area over here. So you have the fans that are going to be something like uh, like right over here, and they're going to be vroom, vroom. You, you get the idea. So. This is where there's going to be a lot of airflow, and you can tell that there's a lot of airflow here because of the amount of dust that gets over here. Now, you may think, well, that's just dust. What's the, you know, what's the big deal about dust? That's, you know, you're always going to have dust in the computer. What's the worst that dust can do? Oh, oh, my friend, this is a MacBook. So let's show you what the worst that dust can do is. So tell me if you notice anything about this cable over here. Then you have a normal looking cable, normal looking cable. I've pumped up the HDR, by the way, so it's gonna be a little washed out, but it helps you see the effects that are really difficult to see in a recording. So if I zoom in a little bit more, you have a normal cable, normal cable, normal cable, normal cable, normal cable, and then over here, you have an indentation. It looks like I stabbed it with my tweezer, but I did not. That's actually where a piece of dust was when I first unraveled this, or I should say when Paul first unraveled this, and this is what is going to cause this to have a, this can actually cause this to have a messed up image. If it hits in the right spot where the right data line is going through, the dust that crinkles this cable can actually crinkle it in a manner where it no longer is able to pass the signal to the screen. And as you can see, this is an area where a lot of dust gets. This, is, this was not even a particularly nasty computer. It's just this particular section of the computer is something you're not going to see unless you take it apart. And you can see there's another area over here. Again, it's not really the dust that scares me as much as when the dust has caused there to be these indentations in the cable. So over here, there is a clear indentation in the cable right under where the tweezer is. So when I slide my tweezer down there, like see how I'm moving my tweezer back and forth and it's not going back and forth, it's kind of stuck in a hole. So as I go around like this, okay, here's another one. Again, all of those areas are areas where this cable is breaking. And this is not a really easy to replace cable. It's not like a nice little modular thing like this. It's going all the way around there and attaching into the LCD cell. The LCD cell is adhesed into this. Even if you are able to get this LCD cell without, without breaking it, which even if you're really good at this, you're probably going to break it. Uh, again, we, we are very, very good at replacing these screens, but the screen that we take out, that, that's coming out in pieces every time. You have to figure out a way to then put everything back together without getting any sort of dust into the assembly. Again, it's not a screen by itself the way they used to be with the screen and the backlight layers and all of that are all you know, in one piece that you then screw into the computer. The screen in this is adhesed in, but then all the backlight layers and the diffuser layers are part of this display assembly, which means that when this happens, what Apple will do is they'll replace this entire display assembly and they, they charge you for replacing the entire display assembly when this happens. And this seems like something that is really avoidable by not having this design that results in all of the dust kind of this getting to this one part, but more importantly here, the, the, the serious issue, even if you did have dust going to this one part, is having this cable with nothing really reinforcing it over here means that when dust does get in that area, it is going to puncture and destroy this because again, as you move your computer back and forth, here's what you're doing with it. Again, you know, when you open it more, when you open it more, you are putting force on this, which is then gonna push this against here, as you move it, so there's the weight of the display assembly is actually pushing that little piece of dust into the cable and ripping it apart. Now, I know what you're probably thinking at this point. Louis, that customer's disgusting. My computer doesn't look like that. You don't understand. 
This is the area where the fans are going to be blowing in and out a lot of air. As a result of that, that area is always going to trap dust if there is a cable that's doing this right around where the fan is dealing with its airflow. So if you just take a look at the device that we have in question here, this is not a filthy device. This is not a filthy customer. So we have not blown this out yet. Typically we blow the device out after each repair and we haven't finished this yet, so we haven't. And as you can see, this fan is not perfect but it's fairly clean. If you just take a look around the inside of this device, uh, it's in pretty nice condition. Again, you don't have some sort of crazy liquid spill over here. You don't have a bunch of dirt inside of it. I would say this is a very clean interior of this MacBook, and that area still manages to collect an amount of dust that looks like a server that has not been cleaned since 1997. It's honestly a method of failure that I never even thought or imagined was possible but there are endless possibilities, endless possibilities when working on a MacBook. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.